giving consumers a financial edge, providing economic tools designed for you to win. With the Empireonomics business guru, Al Mills, and the credit lady gem dropper herself, Monique Macklin. Hello, 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 and welcome to Wake Up and Win with Al Mills and Monique Macklin. My name is Monique Macklin, and I'm known in the industry as the credit lady. And hey, this is Al Mills, a.k.a. the prophetic financier, the world's number one socioeconomic mobility strategist. Welcome to the call today. Yes, and we have created this space that is designed to enlighten, empower, and edify people to their next level of economic success. On this platform, we do that by having conversations that require you to examine your current situation and make changes as needed to get you to the life that you desire to live by thinking better, banking better, and also leveraging better, as Al would always say. On today's show, we're going to be discussing how to measure your wealth thermostat. Okay, Al, so are you ready to jump on in? Oh, yeah, that's a biggie. That's a big topic. Uh, It is. Most folks don't even know that a wealth thermostat even exists. This is so true. So for those who don't know, we're going to take a moment and explain to those who do be patient with us. So basically, your wealth thermostat is your money story. I think each and every one of us has a money story. I'm sure, Mo, I'm sure Monique, you have a, a money story that you were told when you were growing up. Oh, yeah. We were all taught to, um, <laughs> to go to school, mm-hmm. get a good education, um, then go get a good job. And I remember growing up, people would always try to get me to get like the chief newspaper <laughs> um, and apply civil for service. those civil service jobs. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I knew that wasn't my life a long time ago. I don't, right. I don't like people like that. Oh, but, uh, <laughs> oh <so>. wow. That's, <laughs> so that's not for me. <laughs> but no, that that's a lot of hard work. And I knew I never wanted to, I want to make a lot of money, but I knew I never wanted to work that hard. But I also paid attention to the people around me who were doing just that. And they didn't seem like they were living an abundant life, in my opinion. Yeah, I agree. Um, It seemed very stressful. I was clear myself very early on, you know, Mm -hmm. once again, you know, coming from the islands, you know, that whole influence of you must get a job. Like you said, get Mm -hmm. a job. The old adage in my household was get a job. I mean, get a good education, get a job pay mm-hmm. taxes to the government, interest oh, yeah. to the banks, and buy mm-hmm. all of your goods from private and public corporations. But mm-hmm. more so, money always was relative. And I came from a pretty affluent family, if you will. Mm-hmm. Um, but still, there was always this consciousness around money. You would hear statements like this. Money doesn't grow on trees. Oh, yeah. Oh, I don't yeah. pick up money in the road. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know? <laughs> oh, I can't afford that. Put I that can't back. Afford that. You, know, <laughs> you know, you started to hear these things. So what do you think is happening when you start to hear these negative connotations coming back to you on the subject matter of money? You begin to become under what we call PSTD. That mm-hmm. po- so you so anytime you hear money as a young child, you become stressed out. You do. And you, and you want to avoid the conversation the con- in yes, its entirety. Uh, and so what happens is that gets ingrained in your subconscious mind. Or, well, yeah, it was always a negative reaction, especially like you've asked your parents or something, and then you got to hear this whole long speech about... <laughs> lecture, a long lecture. <laughs> you get a lecture about why you, you don't really need these Nikes or, you know, right. <laughs> you know, how many miles I had to walk to school before I was able to get this, that, and the other. And it's like, right. you know... Yeah, always without one. shoes. I didn't even oh, have well, shoes. Well, that too. <laughs> that too. That too. Right? So, yeah, money was always... A negative. Yeah, it was always negative. I never thought about it like that. But right. Yeah. Right. But however, bringing that along, and again, mm-hmm. I want to just be clear for the for those who are listening, we are advocates for education in no way, shape, or form, or fashion are oh, we yeah. looking to belittle education in any fashion. However, we believe in specialized knowledge. Right. Things mm-hmm. that can be applied to you that you can use to enhance yourself socially and economically together. Not Correct. one without the other. And so to our point is that in our wealth thermostat, we created a certain financial expectancy because of the tracks that we took to get to our income. And so we were taught to become wage earners. Mm. A wage earner is someone who exchanges their time and energy for a specific dollar amount 
mm-hmm. or a wage per month. Mm-hmm. All right. And exactly. so that became our source of income. So just to use this as the example, what is a wealth thermostat? If you were trained and you went to college, got a degree, and you're earning your fifty six thousand four hundred dollars a year. You're real, whole, you're real specific with that. I was real you? specific <laughs> with that number because that's the average income of a bachelorette graduate who graduates Ooh. college. They earn fifty six thousand four hundred according to the labor statistics. That's horrible. What All right. Point? But again, that's following the plan that was given to us. Right. That's now, true. Let's, let's just take into effect when that plan was really successful is when America was in an industrial revolution. That's we are true. no longer building Babylon. No. Babylon is built. We're Correct. now in an informational age. So that old premise or Doesn't principle work. does not apply to today's lifestyle. Mm. Okay. And so thus far, this is why so many um, college graduates are financially frustrated because their wealth thermostat is set, first and foremost, set for active income. Correct. So, And, it, and active income is what you just described when you that have is to correct. trade your time for dollars. Absolutely. So let's think about a thermostat for a minute. In your home or your apartment, there's a little box on a wall that has settings. So some of you are blessed enough to have a digital one, but they're the <laughs> other ones who had the old dial that you had to turn it oh, yeah. to set it to a particular temperature. So that is called a thermostat. The same applies in your financial life, where if your skill set and your action set was only based on earning $56,400, then what is the role of the thermostat? So this wealth thermostat is if you are earning less than 56400 your wealth thermostat will turn the heat up on you, mm-hmm. turn your pressure up on you, and yeah. you get on your hustle and your grind to make that said amount. That's true. Now, be mindful. In our last episode, we talked about goals and targets. No yes. one ever goes past their target. When they reach that number, they fall back. And so in this example... You mean they get comfortable? They get very comfortable and cozy. They feel as though they arrived, and that's the end of it. And Mm -hmm. so here we are in this wealth thermostat scenario. You are earning less than what your setting was. The heat turns up, and you then go out and look for the hustle or the side gig and the like. But there's a double-edged sword to this wealth wealth thermostat. Mm -hmm. On the reverse side to that, if you look to earn more than the 56400 no matter how much information or new training that you believe that you receive, your subconscious setting on money and accomplishment is going to cool you down and then give you limiting beliefs to say that, mm. well, you know what, uh, I'm, I'm not qualified to, yeah. to, to earn more money or I have to get a, an additional degree. Now yeah. you understand what happens when people then go back to school yeah. to get more accreditation to yeah. kind of reset their consciousness to believe that they are worthy for more income. Isn't that like, in my opinion, like a big scam? I, I'm going to call it what it is. It is a scam. Okay. <laughs> because the word I'm just education. Sure I'm just making yeah. you know, yeah, sure. That's the word how I education. look at it. Mm-hmm. Listen to the word education. I'm sorry. The word education in itself. Mm-hmm. The word education comes from the root word educo, which means to bring about or to be fruitful. So if one is educated, then they should be fruitful or bringing about opportunity. On but their own. Under the, on their own. But yes. under the current circumstances of how education is taught in, in North America, in the Western world, mm-hmm. it's about acquiring more. Yeah, not bringing forth fruit, but acquiring, acquiring more, more. Okay, in the form of in the form of information. Yes, because in our primal brain, we believe that the more resources we have is going to retain our survival. Mm. But then, but do, but no, do people not realize that they're? Well, it does. Well, let's just say it does work for some people. That, it does. that going to get that piece of paper or that extra accreditation. It does work for some people, but in addition to you getting that extra information, you're mm-hmm. digging a deeper dead hole. A deeper hole. Yeah. A so deeper, deeper w- hole. One that really does not equate to the salary. Well, I'm going to pull up a statistic for you. Oh, I believe in statistics, but I always say this. Mm-hmm. Trust what we say, but verify what we say. Exactly. So I'm going to always advocate those who are listening to this podcast 
Always trust what we say, but verify it. Exactly. So I'm reading from Income and Education on the Commerce Department of the U.S. Government okay. that under education attained, a person with a bachelorette, again, this was from 2019, but so I, which is 51,800. So now it's, it's up a little bit more to 54,600. Okay. Um, a master's degree earned 65,000. So look at the increase. You earn 14, a little shy of $14,000 more from a bachelorette to a master's degree. But what is the cost or the investment of time and money mm. in getting a master's degree? If you're looking at it from a monetary standpoint, the investment of 50, 60,000, 100,000 for your master's at that level mm-hmm. to support a $14,000 increase in income. Now you understand why people are stuck. They are hella stuck <laughs> and so <laughs> with that <laughs> and so that thermostat keeps you in that proverbial wheel of as we would say going nowhere fast exactly Ooh. so here's the question so here's the question if you continue to watch people before you have taken the same track that you're taking mm-hmm. and they're not fiscally happy they're one of those statistics that are retiring below the poverty level mm-hmm. and you continue doing what they're doing and expect a different result i'm not a clinical psychologist or psychiatrist but what does that tell you the definition of that means insanity insanity so then you have to make a change yes and mm-hmm. so how do you know if your thermostat needs changing first and foremost there needs to be there needs to be a way that that's done there's some questions that you can ask yourself Okay. Sure. Do you experience more scarcity or lack of wealth or abundance questions in your mind? You know, do you mm-hmm. believe you can have what you truly desire, but you settle for less because you think you must only purchase what you can afford? Mm. Are you really a good manager, but it seems as though the money still doesn't add up to enough? Those may be signs that you are not in your proper thermostat. Exactly. Exactly, and, I, and I'll say this: the first way to begin to expand your thermostat is first get a mentor, yes, someone who can show you what is possible mm-hmm. by showing you, teaching you, evaluating you, correcting you, and then rinse and repeat. And then the next thing that you should do is you should shift your scarcity mindset to that limitless abundance mindset. Yes, and there's something that I call that you must do. Every belief that you have. It's either keeping you in a tiny scarcity box mm-hmm. or it's opening your mind to an experience what we call limitless abundance beliefs, which is your valuation of earning more capital or earning more income. Does that make sense? It makes a lot of sense. It makes a lot of sense. So the, the, you really have to make up your mind that you want more. That's and, the very first That's thing. the first thing you have to do is make, make up a your decision. Mind. You have to make a decision no matter what your current income or educational level is because mm-hmm. that what you go for, what you're looking to attain is going to come from the fire inside of you to go get it. That's correct. And you have to replace those limiting beliefs yes, yeah. and replace them with positive expectations and, and truths. And here's, here's some false beliefs that just isn't true. There isn't enough time. There oh. isn't enough money. Yeah. You know, there are not enough big clients. Yeah, I'm not worthy of enough. But when you begin to get connected with a mentor, with a community, Mm -hmm. or listening to podcasts like ours, you begin to comprehend general truth where there's always a limitless of abundance. This is when you change your mindset, where you learn to leverage time through automation, or you're able to add value, which creates wealth in your life. Or you Mm -hmm. begin to identify problems in others and be the solutionist to those things. That's it. And focus on attracting those big opportunities or income opportunities. That's what that's, it's all about. That's what it's all about. As I it was once upon a time, I I was I never felt like I was unworthy. I actually mm. felt the opposite, even being that kid in Bed Stuy. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. um, and we would go and visit family members who lived in big houses or whatever and I said like well they're not special <laughs> <laughs> like why are we still here <laughs> like that that was always my thinking so it and I carried that with me throughout all of my days so I just feel like if somebody else can earn a million dollars I can earn a million dollars if I want to make three million this year I can make three million this year it's really Absolutely. you know I just have to put those things in place in order to get there that's absolutely, all absolutely and again 
you can you are more than enough i always say that to all the members and empowerments you are more than enough you can do an abundance of things yeah. so here's the thing you have to ask yourself though in order to really create to reset that wealth thermostat here's the first money hack or mind mm-hmm. hack that you have to ask okay what must i believe to achieve my x goal in y time I'm going to okay. repeat that again. You have to ask yourself this question. Mm-hmm. What must I believe to achieve my X goal in my Y amount of time? Okay. That's going to put you in a perspective now to see that you need transformation. It, right. Some people don't know what they want, though. It's like they know they want more but they don't know what they want. So I guess that's where a mentor would actually come into play in helping them and helping them to discover, you know, their true passion, their true passion and purpose is out there. So, yeah, it's, it's, um, that thing you, we spoke about last week, even when, um, measuring our wealth thermostat, kind of where we stood in the society, society. Mm -hmm. that was an eye opener as well. Mm-hmm. Because when I did mine, I landed in the 1%. And I would have thought I wouldn't have landed in the 1%. But based on ed- my education level and it, my income, I Put am you. a one percenter. Absolutely. And here's and, the thing. I'm, not the, I'm sorry. So many people are thinking that you have to become a millionaire in order to be considered successful. Or that's always that's been true. the standard Six figures or a million dollars are always in the standard. But this, less than 16% of the American population earns 150000 a year. That's crazy. So the very first thing you want to do fundamentally is set your thermostat minimally to, to hit 150000 Exactly. Exactly. Because, because wealth starts at $250,000 in income. Okay. Even that's, in, to... even that's interesting with that number you just gave, because what most of us would think it started at a seven figure number. Mm-hmm. No, not at all. With proper financial intelligence, mm-hmm. that with those with that form of income, you can create a multitude. But it all starts back with what do you perceive as being possible? This and that's true. where the next that's the next secret that we have to talk about before we conclude today is how to upgrade your personal identity. Mm. How you how you see and experience yourself is very important. It is. Upgrading your personal identity. How would one do that? Well, basically, how do you see yourself? That's the very first thing. If you want to achieve much bigger goals, such as X and X Y, y time, you have to upgrade and expand who you are. Mm-hmm. How you see yourself, how you feel about yourself. This now, all this begins is not, your mind. Sorry, this is not all about monetary either. No. It's 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 also about because I what you teach is not um, it's money freedom, but it's mostly time freedom. And Absolutely. with and with when the money is coming in the way it's supposed to, then you'll have the time to do whatever you want to do. Correct. So you have to figure out how do I and a lot of people in this pandemic have realized that they've been wasting or spending a lot of time working and making other people rich oh, so I love that that's, word. that's that's why a lot of people have quit their jobs i believe it was about four and a half million just in november that quit their jobs for various reasons but most of people most of the people are realizing i don't want to spend my days working for somebody it's time now we're now entering the, what we call the gig economy yes and now, but then in this gig economy, you need to attain specialized knowledge to navigate in these mm-hmm. uncertainties. Yes. Otherwise, you, you would think that you're making a more sound decision in your adulthood, but you're actually being controlled by a five-year-old. That mm-hmm. little person who learned the, the money story as a child is oh, pulling yeah. your strings today. Yes, yes, yes. For example, ask yourself this question. When you hear of a millionaire or billionaire, what comes to mind? What kind of thoughts enter your mind? If they're negative, you will never become what you despise. Mm. Okay. Well, I would think that you would um, look at people or look up to people that you may aspire to want to be like. Mm -hmm. Because I know growing up, I wanted to be Oprah. 
<laughs> so, okay, nothing wrong with that. <laughs> oh, wrong know, with that. that. And then so you when you hear their stories, their rags to riches stories, her to Tyler Perry's, and it's like, well, you know, it, that they they actually show you that this is possible, but mm-hmm. you can start where we're at today and still make that possible. Well, here's the question. What makes us different than Elon Musk where they're sending people to Mars or to the moon? He what makes what's the difference? He executed, he but executed. he believed that it was not only it was possible. possible, but it was a it was possible for him. That's true. That's true. See, that comes back to that false belief again. If you don't have a good positive personal identity, you may yeah. be saying to yourself, I fear I'm too old or too late to the game. That's true. Or I, a lot of people think you know that's awesome that's wonderful but it's just that's for them that's not right. for us oh, oh, here's a big thing. one. Oh, i come from a family that struggles it's our curse yeah yeah you hear that a lot let's break generational curses and stuff yeah. like that so yeah well, and if you've never seen it it's hard for you to like you said you know hold that in your hand if you've never seen no anyone like you do that you know, this seems like it's so out of reach, but it's it's, been, it's out of reach for everybody. But people are accomplishing it. Okay. It may seem out of reach for everyone, but people are out there doing what you want to do. So that's where you have to first come to that new self-image. See yourself be doing and having all of those things. Yes. And mm-hmm. start to ha- change the language. Start to change the intimate conversation that you have with yourself. Start saying, it's easy for me to attain anything that's that I it. desire once I commit. That's it. You have to speak life into your into yourself and into your dreams. That's right. Into your goals. Speak to those dry bones. Into your children. <laughs> into your children, absolutely. You have to speak life into, you know, all that is you <clears throat> in order for you to accomplish those things. And speak it every day. Every single day. Every day. As I know, when I was a single mom raising my daughter, and we prayed every day before we walked out that door, and I was, <laughs> saying, I was saying was, Failure is not an option. That's Regardless right. of what's going on in this world, we're not going to fail at this. That's so, right. yeah, you you have to speak that into your children every day, mm-hmm. no matter yeah. what. And as we close out this segment, here's a practical application. When you want to begin to expound or expand your personal identity, and there's something you want, if it's a, if it's a, a multi-million dollar home or a larger home, Mm-hmm. Start going to visit those new construction homes. Oh, walk, yeah. walk the property. Smell the paint. That's or it. if it's a luxury or exotic vehicle that you want, go to the Bentley dealer. Go to the That's Porsche it. dealer. Start to feel and touch and smell. Activate all of those modalities that you have mm-hmm. and begin visualizing and seeing yourself. It's going to drive you. It's going to. Because I send you, <laughs> I send you houses all the time. I'm like, look at this one. <laughs> look at that one. You keep expanding. <laughs> Yeah, and trust you, and know you that like, go you get that house. You like, go get capacity. that house. Go get that house. Don't <laughs> claim it. Go get it. Yeah. Create, create. You see, we have to learn to do the math. Yeah. So in this wealth formula, on this wealth thermostat, you have to learn to do the math. And that's an acronym for manifesting at the highest. Because mm. everything that we do is about taking the intangible and turning it into the tangible. That's true. So in, so, the, so in closing, the next time someone calls you a materialist, tell them thank you. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, I remember you said that. Someone says that you're materialistic, say thank you. Because that's my <laughs> whole process and system is to take my, inter- my intangible ideas and thoughts coupled with feeling mm-hmm. and bring them into the material realm. So yes. Yeah. Where well, you're Gucci. <laughs> <laughs> All those Bugattis I post, I'm going to get one. That's right. <laughs> so, it's just a, whatever it is. Whatever it is. Because you're a co-creator. You have to know who you are. Knowledge of self is very imperative. And this, is is. Why we, this is why we're providing this valuable content, not necessarily to sell you on anything, but to no. uplift and elevate your consciousness. This, well, yeah. this is like modern day church. Yes. And also, just reminding people that they are worthy of it. Some people don't feel like they're even worthy of having nice things. Or, you know, you might be jealous of somebody else who has something nice. Don't be jealous. Go get it. Go get it's it. like it was available to them. It's available to you. You just have to just, you know, put in put those things in place to go and get it. And if you don't know how to go get it, go get a coach. Go get a mentor. Yeah. Or and have, a, them be have a conversation with the person that has it. There you go. Simple. <laughs> you never know. They might Simple. have some opportunity for you. <laughs> 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 
you just never know. You so, never know. you know, don't don't stop yourself. Um, you know, don't make it, you know, keep yourself stuck, as you always say. Don't be stuck in in, in outdated messaging from our past, which is, you know, really keeping people pigeonholed where they're at right now. Right. And I get you, what we you know, you're getting those government jobs, so they have levels that you can't ex- go past or something like that. That's true. They're ceiling. They're they are ceilings to uh, how far you can reach. Now, again, and we're not we're not advocating that it's yeah. not great to have a civil service job. Of course, you know, <laughs> they're, they're, everyone has a role in this big this thing is called true. life. This However, is you know, Scripture says that there will always be the poor amongst us. Yes. So many people believe that that meant monetarily poor. No, oh, no, it meant wealth conscious poor. Yes, because if you know who you are as a co-creator and you have the power to obtain wealth mm-hmm. then you shouldn't settle for a wage learn to court wealth oh no that's right then learn to court wealth say that again court wealth that's right court <laughs> wealth stop dating riches no that's right <laughs> And this is the tip of the iceberg of the things that we talk about in the Empire Nomics community. Yes. You know, again, Monique is one of the leaders as well. And I'm just saying, I'm ex- excited about having this conversation and really mm-hmm. making an impact for the people. Oh, yeah. We're going to help a lot of people just just open their mind, expand their vision, mm-hmm. and actually go after those things that they're desiring. So, with yeah, a plan. With, with a plan. Right. Don't just jump head first. Have a plan in place. So that you can then put those things, put your your steps in place to reach that destination. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, this has been an awesome conversation. So this, again, has been how to measure your wealth thermostat. And we're going to add a link in the caption of this where you can actually weather, uh, measure your, your, where you're at economically, socioeconomically, where you're at. Um, and if you're below Oh, or above a 3%, right? If you're above yes. 3%, then you need mm-hmm. to make some changes. Mm-hmm. You need to make Correct. some changes in your wealth thermostat. So check the link, the information in the caption for a link. And um, this has been an awesome conversation. Al. As usual, once again. Yeah, I, I enjoyed this. This is awesome. Upgrade your personal identity. That's a, that's going to be something I'm going to say a lot. Oh, you yeah. Know, upgrade yourself. You know, in the Matrix movie, you know, to create a, get a new download, upgrade your <laughs> upgrade your hardware. Your yeah, software. that's it. Stop operating on that outdated messaging. That's um, right. So yeah, you, you can't be in Windows 10 and operating Windows XP. This doesn't make sense. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. All right. Well, again, this has been awesome, and we awesome. will be here on the next episode talking about choosing your right industry, your right niche to operate in when you're looking to go into business or uh, maybe expand your business. So we're going to be talking about the right industries to to jump into. So well, again, I like how you said that, niche. That was very mm-hmm. chic. Niche. niche. <laughs> <laughs> oh, niche. That's how they say it, right? Niche. <laughs> what part, part of the world are you in? Niche or niche? That's just yeah. like Target or it's all about your how you feel about yourself See? that's it niche I, I i drink my tea with my pinky out so. <laughs> i love it yeah, awesome. all right so we'll chat again real soon awesome <laughs> all right take care you too thank you for listening to wake up and win with al mills and monique macklin we hope you've been enlightened by today's message please subscribe to our podcast and share with your friends on your social media platforms. If you have any questions or comments, follow us on Instagram at wakeupandwinshow. and win show.